and that chilling effect could have been could have been exerted very powerfully had it not been for people like myself uh, and more prominent people like J.K. R- J.K. Rowling uh, testing the law by um, making sure that we continue to speak freely and to challenge this regressive, uh, illiberal legislation. You're so right. I've been following J.K. Rowling. By the way, she causes rever- reverberations even here in Canada, but in yeah. in the West Coast city of Vancouver on the Pacific side of our country, a young nurse put up a billboard that just says, I heart J.K. Rowling, and she's been prosecuted ever since um, for conduct unbecoming. So J.K. Rowling is is a fascinating person with such a huge platform, and she exerts herself for freedom. I saw the other day she tweeted that if anyone gets in trouble for, say, yeah. misgendering someone, because I think you're right, this is about... a one of the things they're going to do, if, they, if they're not protecting sex, but they're protecting gender identity, seems pretty clear to me this is a transgender censorship act. J.K. Rowling said she will re-utter whatever right. someone who is charged with a hate speech says. She's basically saying, come and get me, pick on someone your own size. And she's, she's got an enormous size in terms of reputation, uh, fo- a following, and of course, money. She won't be as easily picked on as a as an ordinary person. No, I I think what she's she's done is incredibly courageous uh, and really important because uh, she's really called out the chilling effect and she's made it quite clear uh, that she will stand with anyone who is targeted uh, by the uh, gender ideology mob. Uh, and you know this is, you know. Queer theory, or I call them queer theory extremists because they are one strand of the critical social justice movement, which is uh, an inversion of everything that they purport to stand for. Uh, and and so um, I think it's incredibly important that people like J.K. Rowling row in behind ordinary citizens. And I certainly have made it absolutely clear that I will not be silenced. I will not be stopped speaking up about child safeguarding, speaking up about women's rights, and uh, the protection of LGB people, sex-based rights, which have also been uh, um, brought into this so-called LGBTQI, et cetera, movement uh, um, without any thought or consideration of whether we want to participate in this nonsense or not. Well, isn't that interesting? Because, of course, you, as an elected member of parliament, have parliamentary privilege. And what does that mean? One of the things it means is that your speech is protected. It's it's protected absolutely when you are in the chamber of the House of Commons. That's something that we inherited from you here in Canada. But there's also an argument to be made that what you do in the service of your constituents as an MP, when you make comments on Twitter or outside the chamber, there's an argument that that would have privilege as well. This seems to me to be an attack not just on ordinary people, but if you yourself have been targeted and if police followed up with a bizarre communication, I wonder if you have ever given consideration to filing a point, of, to, to making a point of privilege, a, compl- a privilege complaint to the Speaker of the House of Commons. Um, that, that strikes me as you would be one of a small number of people who would be able to do that because you are, you know, an MP. Well, I mean, we do have parliamentary privilege, but it's—I mean, parliamentary privilege is not an absolute right to say whatever you want. Of I mean, course, you can. You, you you still have to behave within the the, the rules of parliament, and uh, you know, and outside the chamber, you you're not covered by some of the protections of privilege. So you do have to be careful about what you say. But the the, the basic uh, um, position that I've taken is that I will continue to tell the truth. I, I will continue to speak. Uh, clearly about my political views, my lawfully held political views uh, about some of the thorny issues that we're dealing with. Uh, I will continue to stand up for young people who are being subjected to the most horrific medical and surgical interventions without any proper care uh, or consideration of their rights and they're accelerated onto these fast track paths into uh, transgender clinics. Uh, uh, and, uh, you know, I feel that that's my absolute responsibility 
to speak loudly and clearly about this, this. And if the police and the government deem that unlawful and they want to arrest me, then they uh, they can do that. But that will open a Pandora's box because, you know, certainly in the last week, we've started a petition. The Alaba Party, my party, have started a petition to repeal the Hate Crime Act. And so far, uh, 68% of the Scottish population agree with us. Hmm. Uh, so these, these laws are not popular. I'm sure you've experienced uh, this uh, much more profoundly in Canada, uh, you've been on quite a torturous journey under Justin Trudeau uh, over the last few years, and uh, you know, and I stand in solidarity with uh, you know, uh, I, you know, Chris Enston. I, 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 I met Billboard Chris personally; had a good chat with him uh, last year. But many, many campaigners who are standing against this and uh, a liberal movement, which seems to have afflicted governments across the world. And uh, we really must stand united uh, to defeat this liberal movement. Well, that's very interesting to me that you've been following what's going on in Canada. And we know Billboard Chris well, because he's the pointy edge of the spear on that issue. Um, unfortunately, you're ahead of us in terms of legislation. Justin Trudeau's proposed censorship bill is only just introduced in Parliament a few months ago. Let me ask you one question about going back a bit to the 8,000 or so complaints that were filed right away. Yeah. You mentioned that the man who proposed this bill, the first minister of Scotland, Hamza Yusuf, had the most complaints against him. I'm not surprised. But here's my question to you. Who judges whether or not a complaint will get the non-hate crime incident marking or if it'll be kicked up a notch and actually be investigated and prosecuted by police? Is that a police decision? Is there some uh, hate finder general? Some Is there some panel of activists? In Canada, different hate crimes have a different answer for that. There's something called the Canadian Human Rights Tribunal, etc. If they were to proceed against you, who would make that decision? And I guess my follow-up question is, does that mean if Hamza Youssef appoints the hate finders that they'll never accept a complaint against him. And it, maybe you can tell us a little bit about how this process works, or maybe it's still a bit of a mystery. Well, it, is, it absolutely is a mystery. I mean, that's one of the, uh, the, the issues about the precision or lack of, of the legislation, is it doesn't, uh, it doesn't even mention non-crime hate incidents. This is a, a matter of mystery, uh, and it seems to rest in the hands of whoever the police officer is that uh, is investigating your specific complaint. Uh, and um, what's interesting about uh, non-crime hate incidents and uh, how they will or will not be recorded is that uh, the minister responsible for the legislation, Siobhan Brown, who has done the rounds of the various different media channels in the UK uh, since the bill was introduced, is unable to clarify any of this detail. And there are no planetary notes that set out how this would be uh, recorded and what the threshold is uh, to trigger a non-crime hate incident. So none of that is clear. But what has become clear is that the First Minister has stated uh, in the media that neither he nor J.K. Rowling will have a non-crime hate incident recorded against their name. Now, you know, that is, that is a, a, simply a question of equity. So if you're a first minister or the most famous author in the world and you don't have a non-crime hate incident marked against your name, then why is uh, a member of the Scottish Parliament able to have one put against his name or indeed any other person in the country without being informed or, more importantly, being able to defend themselves? What happened to a right to the, the right to a fair trial? <laughs> 